On this week's Force.com cast video, we're going to show you how you can improve the speed of the loops that you might have within your code to help dramatically reduce the amount of CPU time that you're consuming and improve the speed of your code overall. Salesforce, uh, within the past few releases, moved to using CPU time as the way of managing uh, the governors around Apex execution. And developers now get 10,000 milliseconds of CPU time for any process which they want to run. If it goes over these 10,000 milliseconds, the process is terminated as uh, breaking the governor limit and it won't execute properly. So it's really important that we're trying to make the most of this CPU time and consume the uh, smallest amount of resources. If we have a loop like this as well that's running in a page or if we have some code that's running on a page, the faster we can get that code to run in the background, the quicker the page will update and re-render and be displayed for the user and the better the overall user experience will be. What we've got here is just a simple method that I've written for demonstration purposes where we take in an account object and some preference boolean value and all we do is we loop through all the contacts related to the account and set the email preference field to be the same as this preference value. So this is a method that we could be see, uh, could imagine being used on a page where you click a checkbox next to the account and then it'll update the email preferences for all of the contacts related to that account. I've got it here in a static method uh, just to make it easy for me to test and demonstrate with um, and if I switch over to my execute anonymous window you can see what I've got is an account that I'm retrieving, the S-Force account, and for this demonstration I've added over 10,000 contacts to that account uh, for us to work with. So we can see the, uh, the impact of the scaling. After I've achieved the account, I store the start CPU time, I run the code with the account and the false value, and I also store the end CPU time afterwards, and what we'll do is we'll debug the difference to find out how long the process has taken to run. So we can execute this process, and we haven't done anything to change it, but the code looks like it should be uh, fairly good code. There's nothing uh, wrong with that code, um, but it took 2,374 milliseconds, so about 2.4 seconds. So if we were running this on a page, um, it wouldn't be the quickest thing to re-render um, or to help update the page, and the user experience might not be too great. If it was in a trigger or something, it would also take a bit longer for the trigger to execute. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an updated method now that I've just uncommented. And in this updated method, what we do is we have a local variable j that we instantiate in the for loop. And that variable is only accessible for this for loop, but it stores the size of the contact list against the account. We then reuse that for the conditional here to find out when our loop needs to stop. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow the system to just have the single local value that it needs to retrieve rather than having to go through the account object retrieve the contacts list and then find out the size every time. Now we just have the variable storing that integer for us. So what we'll do is we'll rerun our code again, exactly the same code, except this time when we run it, the number should be considerably lower. In fact, it comes back as 1350 milliseconds. So we've already shaved off an entire second of CPU time. That might not seem like a lot, but that's 10% of our resources we've, resources we've already saved. And when we were previously consuming a quarter of our resources, we're now consuming only around 13%. So that's really good for us, um, and we can also use our calculator if we want to work out the percentage saving. So uh, if we do 1350 divided by 2374, um, we're now only consuming 56 or 57% of the resources we were before, and so we've got about 43 or 44% of the resources now available, which is really good for us. So what we'll do is we're going to make one more improvement to the loop, um, and this will allow it to run a lot faster. For this improvement, what we've done is we've refactored the code a little bit. So rather than passing back a con uh, an account, we're passing back the list of contacts that have been updated, as it's more than likely that the code that we're working with could be updated just to update that list of contacts rather than the list of contacts associated to the object. It'll be the same effect, it's just a slight tweak in the code to make it work better for us. What we're now doing is we've declared a local contacts uh, list where we're storing the contacts associated to the account. And then when we loop through we're still, kept in, uh, still saving the size in the J variable and we're just going to use this contacts list rather than going to the account.contacts every time. And this will save the CPU from having to go away, retrieve the account, find the contact from the list associated with that account, and it's just going to speed things up. Again, 
you'll be surprised at how much it will speed things up because if we now run this new code, it will dramatically reduce the CPU time even further, down to only 210 milliseconds. So this is a dramatic saving. And if we were to run, the, uh, run this code on a page, it would mean that our page would re-render a lot faster than it would previously. So if we get the calculator back up, what we can do is we can see that uh, 210 divided by 1350. So based upon our improved method, we've only using 16% uh, of the resources now. So that's 84 odd percent of the resources that we've saved. And if we do it compared to our original method, We're now only using 8% uh, or 9% of the resources that we were, uh, were originally. So that's a saving of 91, 92%, which is a dramatic cut in the amount of CPU time that we're using and really improves page performance um, and the overall performance of the platform. We can also now see that if we do 210 divided by 10,000, so the overall limit, we're now only consuming 2% uh, of our available CPU time in running the exact same code that was previously consuming 24% of the CPU time. And again, this is a very dramatic improvement and really allows the page to run faster and allows our system to be more performant. So this is important not only for user experience purposes, but allowing you to do more with the platform as well and kind of have a system that scales in the best manner possible. That's all there is for this week's Force.com cast tip. If there's a tip or a trick you'd like to hear about, or a tip or a trick you'd like to share, please contact us using the at force.comcast Twitter handle. Um, if you'd like to, please share the videos. And if you have any feedback, please either send it to the at force.comcast Twitter handle or comment either in the notes below or against the video. Thank you very much.